we've come to the beautiful Standon House down in West Sussex to, well, <laughs> just, just for the fun of it, but exactly. also to shoot with the 35 F2 Apo Lanthar Voigtlander lens. Yeah, so you got 3518 as well to compare it with. Yeah, this is my go-to kind of historical home lens. I'm gonna see what this is like in comparison. I mean, we were quite impressed by 50 Apple lens. Yes, we were. So let's uh, walk around the grounds, the house will take you with us and see how it does. <laughs> One thing I do like about this is the weight. I mean, it's quite solid, uh, but it balances nicely. The aperture ring is at the front as with the 50 F2. So you're gonna have to remember that uh, focusing is beautifully smooth. And like all the Voigtlander lenses, it's got that lovely scallop focus barrel and it's all metal construction. And we're back. Back here on flowers. I was going to see how long I could go without shooting pictures of flowers. So the closest focusing distance on this is 35 centimeters, which in practical terms is about there from that. I watched a review on the Leica version uh, and there was a comment on how much focus breathing the lens has. It's true, actually. It's quite visible in the viewfinder. So focus breathing basically means that as you, as you change your plane of focus, or as you focus in and out, it seems like the subject is slightly more cropped in. It slightly affects the focal length. So that's quite interesting. It's quite noticeable. With most of these lenses, I find the usable aperture is actually not the widest aperture. That tends to be the case with most lenses. You don't want to shoot them wide open. Uh, saying that, at F2, they do produce a very nice character. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, then that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get the sharpest image at f2. However, between about 2.2 and 2.5, it starts to very noticeably become usable. And the next marked aperture is f2.8, uh, performs really, really well at 2.8. Is it handling, Con? You know, it's nice and smooth. It's, you know, when the things were made properly, you know, all metal, you know, all this plastic nonsense, doesn't have a lot of focus motor. So it asks you to work for your shot. Using hyperfocal distance, adjust your aperture to make sure everything is sharp. Everything just feels nice and smooth. I mean, it's, look at this focusing. It's, it's like proper greased aperture is nice and clicky, just the way I like it. Nice. Takes you back, makes slows you down, makes you think about shot more than just spray and pray. So it's for this type of photographers, not where you want to just press the button, the shot is there for you. If you want to think, you want to create, that's where you take something, you buy something like this. If Con takes a picture of flowers in the woods, but there's no one there to hear him, did he really take the picture? There's no evidence <laughs> of me taking pictures of flowers. <laughs> no one can see me. Sometimes you feel like just going alone remotely somewhere, <laughs> disappearing and secretly taking pictures of flowers. So no one knows. You see, it would be nice to add something like a promised filter to get this glow from the natural light that's coming through, just mm -hmm. to get this kind of a little bit of fuzziness, diffusion to the image. Saying that it's too sharp, the lens is too good. It's, it's good, it's, it's got this morning rendering, which looks nice and sharp. I did envision it in more of a kind of five by four crop. Oh yeah. So if you crop a little top and the bottom, then you get the shot really. Lovely. So Becky, tell me, what are your thoughts on this lens? Now you've, you're a 35mm person, you had 
all the 35F mount lenses. You now own the Z3518 Nikon lens as well. What are your thoughts on the upper 35 from Voigtlander? Well, I have to say I was very excited about this lens coming out. It, it, 35 is a focal length that I will use in situations like this. As you say, I've got the 1.8Z. In fact, that's my go-to lens normally. The, the Nikon one is, is very clinically good, you know? Yeah. It's just good, there's no complaints, it doesn't do anything particularly special, but it's it's sharp and does exactly what it says on the box. It's convenient. Exactly. But this one has a little special something something that is somewhat unquantifiable. Obviously it's manual focus, so you have yeah. to get over that fact, but I don't find that distracting or a problem if you're gonna shoot situations where you need the autofocus, you need that quick like snap to take the shot and go, well then that's your lens. But if you have the time to take a step back and think a little bit more about what you're shooting and you're happy to manual focus, I think this is a really good contender. I'm really excited about these Apo lenses. I hope we're gonna see more. It would be nice to see maybe a, an 85 thrown into the mix. That's true, what I like about those lenses, they're not trying to do the same. As we see, let's say, with some other brands offering, they basically release the same modern lens with modern rendering, etc., etc. Voigtlander does something different. They differentiate themselves in terms of the way the image looks taken with this lens versus Nikon lens. And then you can choose which look you like and decide for yourself. There you go. Photographer. How cool is he? Oh wow. He's got one of those point and shoot cameras, isn't it? <laughs> He's a little press photographer. His name is well, the sculpture's name is Watch the Birdie by Alan McKenzie. And it can be yours for £755. £750? That's almost like the price of the 35 Apple lens. Yeah, it's true. Except someone poured their love and soul into this guy. Just getting for the Greys of Westminster courtyard. You know what I'll buy? I'll buy 35 f 2 d second hand and pocket the rest of the money. Okay. <laughs> I see you found a spot to sit. Yes, I found a place to be. You've taken some portraits of me and as a self-proclaimed portrait photographer, I decided to give my final word okay. on how good those lenses are. So looking at 35 Apple lens, the 3D rendering or what we call 3D pop or micro contrast or whatever you want to call it is definitely there because the image pops more. You've got a slightly nicer separation compared to 3518. Now 3518, out of the box the image looks flat. You do get the separation. It's just the Voigtland lens feels a little bit better. Again, it's difficult to put into some sort of numbers and figures, but it's definitely there. So again, for this extra bit, would you pay more and you skip the autofocus? That's the question you have to answer to yourself, really. Okay, let's talk about price for a minute. The 35Z 1.8 lens is priced £809 on offer at the moment. This lens priced at 849 So who will it appeal? Well, if you prefer the image quality over the convenience of autofocus, then this one's gonna be the only choice. Now. The problem with that, of course, is that the image quality, while superior, is not exactly a day and night difference. So my advice is really, if you like to explore, if you like to concentrate on your shot, then get something like this. 3518, though, is very convenient, is very point and shoot, therefore very convenient. Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe, it really helps the channel. And if you found this video super useful, there's super thanks button as well. See you soon. Mm -hmm.